thanks for tuning in once more. Today is a hectic day. Today we have a whole lot of uh, uh, panelists who will be joining our platform very soon. Uh, we'll be talking today a whole lot on what is happening right now. Cameroon is caught in a corner, tight, very tight corner, because uh, it has uh, demonstrated a lot of arrogance and stubbornness uh, to respect the uh, international community cause and uh, uh, some individuals who have uh, seen that Cameroon should have uh, really approached the problem. It has in a different way, but since then, the uh, Cameroon has not yet done anything that favors uh, all the calls and all the advices it received from left and right. Uh, at this moment, now Cameroon is in that tight corner because uh, the United Nations and the international communities have kept on mounting pressure, and the pressure is unbearable to an extent that uh, President Bia has decreed uh, for an extraordinary session after the parliamentary session just held and uh, they didn't make mention of the special status. It's been a crazy uh, moment and Cameroon has been in the news for the negative things because it's been a very long time. The only thing you can Google or get on Cameroon was be uh, the poor handling of the crisis that has taken place in the Northwest and the Southwest. The military option that was taken was not a successful one. In today's uh, program, uh, we've given the platform open to people to participate, to tell viewers, to be able to uh, uh, link and join the flight platform either through Skype or through a phone call and perhaps put their problems or their questions ahead so we can attempt to answer them. Uh, we are at the service of the people. Uh, Media to Africa has been doing everything to make sure it pushes uh, the information that would really reach the people, the kind of information, first-hand information, and to equally uh, during uh, per pro per programs of uh, charity where somebody is trying to uh, raise something to succeed uh, in touching the lives of those who need help. And, uh, Media to Africa is at that uh, service too, not only organizing debates and diasporama, we have uh, programs that really does encourage people who do humanitarian gestures and need to be pushed. Today will be the topic, the main topic will be uh, centered around uh, the pressure that has been mounted on camera and that is unbearable at this level. And we're looking up to see what President B and his government does concerning the pressure because it has gotten to a level where uh, American government representatives are now at the head of the Security Council, uh, UN Security Council. Uh, like uh, we uh, followed all over the news, we followed uh, uh, Kelly, who was uh, very, very uh, vocal on the situation and telling uh, the world how Cameroon has been very reluctant to uh, do everything to participate uh, in, a, in a real dialogue. Uh, so the sharing that took place in Yaounde that was called a dialogue has not been considered any dialogue at all. So uh, international communities and uh, uh, France, America, and some of these countries that have been following the problems that Cameroon going through for a long time now, recommended for a real exclusive, uh, inclusive dialogue. Uh, because the inclusiveness, the dialogue that took place did not meet any inclusive status because the real uh, people that represent the voices of the Southern Cameroon were not represented because first of all, they were fear of being arrested and locked up and up to then, except uh, some people who are kind of disguised as opposition, who, uh, according to uh, public opinion, that people who did participate were just simply like the same party that uh, just came in their diverse ranks to talk politics, and not a real opposition or people that represented the voices of the Southern uh, Cameroon uh, uh, citizens, the Northwest and the Southwest. We saw a whole uh, kind of a reluctance in approaching the problems, uh, so even the people have said it. This was just a, a, a cooperative uh, match that uh, claimed uh, a equal right at the juris uh, judicial as a, a fields of uh, uh, administration and equally uh, education, but uh, the poor handling escal escalated and it has become a, uh, almost a civil 
a war in Cameroon. Uh, the question the general public uh, and political pundits have been asking, why did it uh, cost Bia so much to just go out as usual and try to meet the people? Uh, what we have, uh, people, general opinion observes is uh, President Bia didn't believe nobody can stand up and, and like uh, try to uh, stand against the long time military power that has been there, but to his greatest surprise, he is getting to his Waterloo. So uh, before accepting for this dialogue, it has really uh, raised the dust for a very long time. Uh, the mics will be open for everybody who has to attend, uh, Skype calls for those who want to participate and uh, put forth uh, questions or something they think they should contribute to see how could best resolve the problems Cameroon is having. Uh, before we will uh, delve into opening the mics uh, so that people do participate, we'll uh, give uh, a kind of run-up of the series of events that has been taking place during these very tough moments for Cameroon. We have uh, known uh, since this crisis how the military has uh, been handling the uh, problem in its own way very radically and equally. It has gotten to the, to the uh, information, the news of uh, the ears of everybody how even those who uh, started as pacific uh, uh, protesters have been radicalized. In the course of the fighting, trying to crush the people that stood up for a right, the people got radicalized and decided to stand up from their slumber, those who were just peacefully expecting to hear the voice to be heard. And since they were pushed to the war and they were not given a chance to express themselves, it became uh, a situation where they said, okay, it was now time they stand up and express uh, and send a me message in a very strong way because peaceful ways did not work. Bia has been in power since 1982, and since then, the Anglophone system has been of the uh, observing a kind of marginalized, marginalized rule where for the length of time few Anglophones have held great political positions or have held positions where their voices could be heard. Despite the prime ministerial post that is always a kind of reference like where people listen to Bia say since his ascension to power he has given the prime ministerial post to Anglophones as if it is a kind of compensation. Uh, we've not seen any other Anglophone hold very uh, uh, critical decision-making positions or ministerial positions with full portfolio, except the Atanganji, who is uh, kind of the same, uh, handling the, 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 the same way uh, Bia does. Uh, when this crisis started, all of us can uh, bear to say uh, Atanganji uh, the Minister of Interior, Isa Chiruma, and a whole lot of these uh, political pundits, uh, people that have been working hand in hand with Bia, they didn't say there was a problem. They are uh, totally ignored and said uh, there wasn't any Anglophone problem. Till it got to a point where ac accepting it came from the Bia they thought they were protecting. President Bia uh, staged a kind of challenge because he came from nowhere and acknowledged it, though very passively, because uh, creating the English faction at Enam after 50 years of uh, union, of unification, was simply a kind of a, 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 a kind of demonstration or telling the public that this is the right time. This is the only time after the length of time Cameroon had put together that Anglophones were being subjected to uh, participate in courses at the NAM in French. Same for other uh, schools of uh, administration, mm -hmm. schools of uh, public uh, works, and equally high institutions in Cameroon too. The official language has always been French. Uh, marginalization was a very uh, clear and it was uh, alarming 
to an extent that uh, people who have been victims like the Anglophone community in Cameroon, they didn't feel themselves in the union. They didn't feel very welcome in the union, the unification of Cameroon. It has been um, uh, we're poorly managed too. Though all this crisis, throughout this crisis, Anglophones have been pacific. It has gotten to a moment where uh, Francophone Cameroonians of good faith have stood up with the uh, Anglophone Cameroonians and they have openly uh, declared their intentions. They have openly supported the Anglophone stance because it has been given uh, a, a, a kind of sleepless night, night to Cameroon since the, the struggle started. When you do an analysis and you see that despite uh, the position maintained by Bia and his close collaborators, who people would claim they have not been uh, good collaborators or good advisors, as they would have told Bia, if you don't know there's a problem, we know there's a problem. Because we saw close collaborators who came uh, on media to uh, say there wasn't a, an Anglophone problem and reluctantly uh, submitted and started acknowledging the fact that there was a problem. But after uh, blood has sp spilled, it has cost a lot for the nation Cameroon just to accept there was, there's been a problem. The question here is, uh, was it really worth the matter to let this blood spill before we accept there's been a problem and try to s resolve it. So most people have seen that reluctance and that kind of demonstration of arrogance because uh, televiewers of uh, local channels of the Republic of Cameroon have witnessed situations where ministers and close uh, collaborators of the BR government have uh, vehemently refused to accept the existence of an Anglophone problem. They reduced it to a kind of regional problem. The, 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 the thing that the international body, the thing that uh, observers, people have seen is so clear. All the public institutions that existed have kind of been closed down to submit Anglophones to dependency. We come to rate, we can enumerate things like the marketing board. We can talk of the famous marketing board. We can talk of Cameroon Bank. We can talk of CDC. And so many of these Anglophone establishments that really had uh, its name high were gradually closed. And uh, this pushed Cameroonians, uh, Cam Anglophone Cameroonians to uh, be very dependent on the uh, Francophone Cameroon uh, setup. It has been widely criticized, even right to the educational sector, administrative sector, because following a prot pro protocolial order in respect to the norms of administration mm -hmm. after the president, we have the, uh, the, the, the representative of the Senate, and we equally have the uh, House of uh, Parliament before you even talk of a prime minister when it comes to standing the ranks of a protocolial order in the BS administration. Today, uh, we are uh, unfortunate that we don't have a representative from the uh, governing party that can defend the stance of the government. So we have one of the finest political analysts of the Cameroonian history, and equally the struggle that he has been in close hand to hand and been uh, very uh, versed on the situation back in Cameroon and equally on the section of the struggles. He will be here attempting to answer the questions that uh, you out there watching would uh, pose uh, through either Skype or on the lines that will be op opening for you people to uh, contact us, connect to us. And this person is no other person than Mr. Kenneth. Mr. Kenneth just joined the studio, and he will be attempting to answer your questions and equally 
where we look up uh, to uh, the other uh, participant panel who will be here in a short while who has been caught up by traffic. So, Mr. Kenneth, welcome to the platform. Uh, thank you very much, Modest. I am glad to be here today again for uh, a special edition of our program uh, just before what uh, President Bia has called an extraordinary session of what continues to pass for a bicameral assembly at the former federal capital territory of uh, Yaoundé. It is really a kind of a, an impromptu because it took so many uh, people unaware. After a parliamentary session took place and nothing was mentioned. In fact. So it's kind of uh, just saying the pressure from outside was unbearable as we would n not expect to see an extraordinary session when the uh, normal session just ended. Meanwhile, the statues, the social uh, special statues given to uh, English Cameroon during the just ended uh, national dialogue was even mentioned. So it is kind of uh, the pressure is really unbearable as uh, it is seen from uh, the kind of uh, impromptu call of uh, uh, extraordinary Congress. What is your take about that? Well, my take on this is that uh, Paul Bia, the president of La Republique, continues to try to play hardball. But at his age, and given the nature of which the struggle for the liberation of the occupied territories has advanced, I really wonder whether he can continue this, his uh, gamesmanship his political gamesmanship that uh, he has been doing for a pretty long time, since 1992. Yeah. Um, my brother Modest, before I continue, let me make one clarification, especially to our brothers, as you would, mm -hmm. and sisters, of course, of East Cameroon, or La République du, du Cameroon. Cameroon. Uh, let it be clear that we do have a Cameroon Occidental, which is French. I'm sorry, Cameroon Occidental, which is the Southern Cameroons, and we have a Cameroon Oriental, yeah. which is uh, La République du Cameroon, or French Cameroon. And in fact, we also used to have a Cameroon Meridional, Meridional. which is the Northern Cameroons. But it is Cameroon Oriental and Cameroon Occidental which uh, uh, merged in a certain way in 1961 to form what would have been called appropriately as the Union of Federated Cameroon Republics. Union of Federated Cameroon Republics. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, what's his name? Andre Marin Bida used to be on the other side and Dr. Enderly used to be on the other side. Then when uh, um, Andre Marie Bida, of course, had trashed Louis Paul Ojula in elections in Yaoundé, Louis Paul Ojula came up with a scheme together with Pierre Mesmer, as well as, um, um, oh, what's his name? Anyway, they came up with a scheme to unseat Andre Marimbida. And that's how they found a much more malleable uh, person from the north from the north part of uh, Cameroon, Amadou Babatura Ahijo, to replace um, Andre Marimbida. In the 1959 elections that were conducted in the southern Cameroons, or 1958, I should say. Yeah in southern Cameroons, the opposition, John Gu Fonchai, defeated the incumbent government of Dr. E. M. L. Enderley, Emmanuel Lipapa Enderley. And that was the first peaceful transition of power on African soil from government to the opposition in the southern Cameroons. So that is how Fonchai replaced Enderley. So by 1961, when Amadou Ahijo was on the other side in French Cameroon and in English Cameroon, you had Foncha, uh, these two people merged. Foncha had the choice of joining Nigeria or 
um, La Republic of French Cameroon. However, the vote went in favor to join uh, French Cameroon. And when the vote went in favor to join French Cameroon, it was because of what the French Cameroons had offered. We were going to be two complete separate entities, two federated republics joining together. Amadou Aijo, even though he had a bigger land mass and Foncha had a smaller land mass, these two were coming together. The French Cameroon had their assembly over there in Yaoundé, and the Southern Cameroons, the assembly in Boya, together with the House of Chiefs. So after the joining, uh, 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 John Gu Foncha became vice president and Amadou Ahijo president. Then you had, uh, I can't remember whether it was Jean Vincent de Paul Ahanda or uh, Anze Chungi, who, not Anze, the other Chungi, Simon Pierre Chungi, mm -hmm. who was prime minister on the other side, uh, but not like our prime minister because the prime minister in the Southern Cameroon is the head of government. So this is what gave. And in the southern Cameroons, you had, we were taking care of everything. We had our treasury. Mm -hmm. We had our police force and so on and so forth. Complete distinct entity from La Republique du Cameroon. And when Foncha became vice president, a little bit later on, in 1966, Augustin Gomjoa, uh, or circa 1966, I should say, Augustin Gomjoa took over uh, as premier of the Southern Cameroons. And we still had our treasury and our police force in the Southern Cameroons. Everything controlled. So, it is much later on that in 1966, when uh, Amadou Ahijo had this uh, uh, fatricidal war with the police force in the Southern Cameroons, and Gomjoa, that a lot of things now uh, transferred forcefully, force-handedly. In fact, the British um, um, judge who judged the case of the Agbo, the police officer or so, and the, the other guy, resigned in protest at Ahijo's high-handedness of miscarriage of justice. They took things now over the, the Aijo looted the Southern Cameroon's treasury, transferred it to Yaoundé, and they transferred the entire Southern Cameroon's force over to Yaoundé. And in fact, if I can go back a little bit even, at midnight on the 30th of September, 1961, before the 1st of October, J.O. Fields permitted the entry of the armed forces of La Republique du Cameroon into the southern Cameroons. And that is why since then we have been an occupied territory. So when we say that the occupied territories of the southern Cameroons, it is not a joke. It is steeped in historical reality. Absolutely nothing else but historical reality. You see, Brother Modest, I want to make this clarification because there are some people... <laughs> what wish washy on the history of these two territories and they say that or they claim that the southern Cameroons is not an occupied territory it is the southern Cameroons is an occupied territory it's like palestine yeah it is like palestine that is why the international boundaries are there cameroon won uh, la republic or the contiguous territory won bakasi from nigeria because bakasi was a part of the Southern Cameroons with the German Milner line of 1919. Yes. So, uh, with the surprise that happened yesterday, or was it two days mm -hmm. ago? Two days ago. Um, uh, these political jerks in parliament, I don't know what they are up to, but we, we it remains to be seen what, mm -hmm. what, they, are, what they are trying to do uh, tomorrow. I uh, want to say a special hi to Dominica Wasum, uh, Kangon Josh, and Napi uh, Tani who are watching. Uh, Kangon Josh is watching all the way from Virginia, and I was some same uh, all the way from DC. And Kangon Josh, uh, I know uh, in the chat he said, uh, at unification, 
uh, where uh, where did they put uh, the, the the police force that the Southern Cameroonians had? Were they uh, either absorbed in the Union government or where did the, all these establishments like the currency by then, the national police and a lot of uh, government institutions that the federal uh, Southern Cameroon had? Okay. If you look at the laundry list yeah. of what was offered during the plebiscite, what Nigeria offered and what La République du Cameroon offered, there is no gain saying that La République du Cameroon offered something much better. Mm -hmm. In that laundry list, it was clear um, La République du Cameroon will take care of certain things and, you know, uh, the uh, the Southern Cameroon's premier would also take care of certain things. Nothing was going to be merged as such. Mm -hmm. And even if it were merged, our Southern Cameroon's treasury was supposed to be separate. Yeah. Okay. The modalities of the union, the instruments of this union between La Republique du Cameroon, or Cameroon Occidental and Cameroon uh, Oriental, had to be written down put in a document and submitted to the United Nations Secretariat of the Trust Territories. This, tr uh, the, um, this tr uh, Trust Territory thing was um, abandoned or uh, it, it no longer exists. I think it's as of 1994. Mm -hmm. But up, up and until today, that's what we talk about, the Union Treaty. Yeah. That Union Treaty does not exist. So what effectively happened is that Amadou Ahidjo, le grand repetiteur, as he was called, because he was just repeating what the French were telling him. Le grand repetiteur, Amadou Ahidjo, systematically dismantled and annihilated everything Southern Cameroonian. They started with our power system, the power plant at Yoke. Yes. Uh, they continued with uh, the public works department. Uh, Cameroon Bank, even Cameroon Bank, because like Pa Foncha had said at the time, you could not borrow more than one million francs in the banks in East Cameroon, in French Cameroon. Mm -hmm. But with Cameroon Bank, you could borrow up to five million francs. And there were all these instruments, all the depositors of farmers' banks, farmers' monies, and so on and so forth. So people were leaving from East Cameroon and coming over to West Cameroon to borrow money, businessmen. And Ahijo did not like that. That's why uh, uh, he shut down the, a, a lot of these things, the National Produce Marketing Board, and all these other uh, hallmarks of Southern Cameroon, Santa Coffee Estate, mm -hmm. and was able and uh, transferred them over to uh, to East Cameroon. Things, uh, the, the the power. I mean, things were broken down and lit and carried yes. over to East Cameroon. Just to just just to destroy completely the Southern Cameroons. That is why, you see, when uh, 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 as they would call it, his illustrious successor Paul Biya, when he sat at the interview with um, Mo, Mo Ibrahim, Mo in, Ibrahim France, in France, he said uh, openly that well, we we tried to we meaning the majority tyranny of French Cameroon tried to. Uh, if you don't speak in the mic, please. And, uh, Oh, yes. We, uh, yeah. In 1984, George Ngango, when he was education minister, they tried to uh, uh, um, uh, completely wipe out the GCE in what they were calling a harmonization of education. But when we demonstrated, I was part of that demonstration, when we demonstrated in 1984, throughout the southern Cameroons, uh, 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 he had to remove his friend George Ngangu as minister and replace him. You know. So th that is it. The, the, the two were, they had to deposit. The, uh, that is why this whole matter, it's not only a fault of um, of the United, of, well, of La Republique du Cameroon per mm -hmm. se. It's also a fault of the United, the United Nations. Nations that the, the decolonization process of the Southern Cameroons was botched. And then if you even go back to Her Majesty's Government of England, why, why were they separating the Northern Cameroons from the Southern Cameroons? Why? The but United Nations simply told them to administer these territories uh, on their trust, on their behalf. 
Then they claimed that for administrative reasons, Southern Cameroons was going to go to Enugu for administrative reasons, and then Northern Cameroons, was it Maiduguri or whatever mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. you know? So that is why uh, most people uh, tend to say it is uh, like uh, the United Nations had hand, uh, uh, handed uh, the uh, English Cameroon to be assimilated by the French because else it would have given uh, English Cameroon the choice of either voting to stay independent, but that option was not put on the table. So English Cameroon had only either to say yes to join Nigeria or stay with the uh, Republic of Cameroon. And they did, uh, did, uh, took a very uh, bigger step uh, to go back to where history had uh, originally uh, put them because before the coming of the, the Germans, the colonial masters, Cameroon has uh, had uh, one known uh, that the union to uh, the, the separation of the, for the big forces that came and impacted uh, the situation where Cameroon became a, a two a separate states. So coming back to Cameroon without guaranteeing English Cameroonians their own stance because gradually they were being absorbed from a federal republic to a, a, a united republic and to f finally to la republic. What steps did the government in place or the representatives of the both, uh, of both English and French Cameroon, did they consider the Fumban Conference that was stated English and French would be official languages and the federated structure of the state were not supposed to be tampered with? But at, 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 <coughs> at breaking down everything, uh, President Ahijo and President Bia gradually and like took it like a one-man decision and became a United Republic of Cameroon and finally to Republic of Cameroon. I don't know if any uh, forces in place were questioned or were consulted before dissolving the federal uh, structure. Okay. Uh, let me mention from the very outset that these world powers, as they are, um, they, 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 they have some sort of a common understanding amongst themselves and they, they work for their own interest, at yeah. least especially back at that time, mm -hmm. especially, uh, you know, from the League of Nations t turning it over to the United Nations, UN or United Nations Organization. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened in the Southern Cameroons uh, is unfortunate because the exact opposite happened in Kuwait and Iraq. While we, the British, were busy separating the Southern Cameroons from, you know, the, what was the entire German Cameroon? In, in the case of Kuwait in Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the Kuwaitis were wanting to join back Iraq in the 50s and the 60s because they clearly told them that, look, we, we are not separate. Those are our brothers. That's the bigger line. They were wanting to join back Iraq, the Kuwaitis. But the British said absolutely no, no, no to that. Mm -hmm. And while they were separating us and uh, out there in the southern Cameroons, over there in um, in the Middle East, in the Arabian Peninsula, mm -hmm. um, they were they were they were refusing the Kuwaitis from joining um, Iraq. Now, in the case of the southern Cameroons, like you mentioned a few moments ago, please. Look, both government and opposition wanted to be independent. I have nothing to do with either Nigeria or, 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 La, or French Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Both government and opposition. In fact, the Manfe meeting of 1959, there was a meeting in Manfe in 1959 mm -hmm. in what was then the Manfe division. And also there, was a, there were meetings in the Lancaster House in England. And in all these meetings, both Foncha and Enderley were stated clearly that you know, they wanted to be independent. Mm -hmm. But towards the closure of some of these meetings, that is when they realized that the British were not prepared to move an inch uh, at all and were going to tell them, hey, you either join Nigeria or you join La Republic du Cameroon. That is why much later on, uh, and as the documents which have been currently declassified show the French actually called the Southern Cameroons un cadeau mm -hmm. de sa majeste. So the Southern Cameroons was a present to the French because how would you explain that 
in this, uh, 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 first of all, when Foncha was going to the Fumban conference and Ahijo was going over there, Foncha had adv uh, Ahijo had advisors, French advisors. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ahijo was a postal service worker who failed his BA pacing. Okay? Mm -hmm. And Foncha and others were teachers. Standard, uh, whether it's Standard 5 or they call that thing. Mm -hmm. Standard 5 teachers. And they got into politics with Pamuna and the, the other people. So, uh, but at that time, we had degree holders too. We also had a, one or two degree holders who were of that bed. The Fumban conference itself is not that, you know, these guys did not have advisors. But if you look at the notes from the Fumban conference, it, it, is, not even, it is not as bad as people are, are thinking. The problem with the notes from this thing is that the implementation went awry. The French, France, had a hidden agenda. Yeah. And Ahijo was just a grand repetitor that they were using to, you know, uh, uh, achieve what they wanted to achieve. The French, in their grand master plan, was to completely wipe out anything English. And that is why by 1966, when Gomjoa was there, Ahijo was looking at some of the actions of Gomjoa as, in fact, as being uh, uh, synonymous to being a terrorist. Rather than Ahijo looking at this thing as they are, hey, Gomjoa is the prime minister over there. He's managing his territory. But in Ahijo's mindset, why would Gomjoa be doing this, ordering arms through CDC? That is what the Southern Cameroon's government had always done, you know? So, um, so the issue here really is that France, through their puppeteer, Amadou Aijo, and Amadou Aijo continues today through another puppeteer, Paul Bia, they were in the process of annihilating the Southern Cameroons, wiping off this place off the map. That is why when Bia went recently, in fact, when Bia went to France twice on issues of this nature without being present in Cameroon, and they asked him, and he went to report to them, he said, we failed. We failed. Uh, Paul Bia, by 79 or whatever year that was, was already working with Elf Serepka to replace Ahijo. And Elf Serepka was part of the French intelligence services. So they worked, hand in, they worked in tandem to... Uh, uh, replace Aijo, and by 1982, when Aijo was uh, purported to be sick, sick or ill, if you would, um, Bia pretended as if he was not interested in any position. But they, they, they had done a lot of groundwork, and he eventually took over as president. And he was not even supposed to take over as president in 1982. Why? Because you had the Southern Cameroons, and then you had the uh, 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 French Cameroon. So the person who ought to have been president in 82 and not Paul Bia had to come from the Southern Cameroons. Yeah. And the, 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 the issue most people uh, uh, are, are really like, it's not been a Bia mistake alone, because when you see uh, the, the, the way uh, uh, this problem has been handled on the uh, national media, where... Uh, these uh, political pundits and some of the intellectual uh, intellectuals of uh, uh, Cameroon have uh, uh, handled the situation on all TV platforms. They have uh, vehemently denied the existence of a, uh, a an anglophone problem. See, it got to a point where Bia himself started creating uh, English sections at Enam, started bringing up uh, uh, things that showed them that he has acknowledged, though silently, but trying to apply it. But only because Bia did not have, President Bia did not have a kind of honest elite that could come up with what was happening on the terrain. No. Um, you see, Modest, these guys are being uh, patently dishonest. Okay? Mm -hmm. Paul Bia himself was the chairman of a 1979 commission. Mm -hmm that had to look into the so-called anglophone problem. Yeah. He, 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 these people are pretending. They are a bunch of pretenders, all of them. They, are, they, are, they, 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 they believe in telling lies. They believe in casuistry. Mm -hmm. 
telling lies and for people to uh, think when they say something is uh, 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 black, they want you to believe that it is white mm -hmm. when it is actually black. So up until now, as we speak, where is Paul, uh, Paul Bia's prime minister report when he was prime minister of, uh, uh, in that 1979? Mm -hmm. He had not produced any report. Mm -hmm. And then those other uh, opportunistic puppets in office in, uh, that he has nominated left, right, and center, of course, they are all answerable to him. Nobody can uh, sit with him at par mm -hmm. and talk to him directly. A lot of those people are... He's, he's, in fact, Paul Pia is almost 90, about 90 years old now. Mm -hmm. So many of these people are just respect him for his age. And you know, according to our culture, it is somewhat disrespectful to tell an old person face blank that, look, you, you're, you're lying. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we cannot sustain lies for 58, 60 years. No, we can't. So uh, the truth have to, no matter how much you hide it under the carpet, it's going to come out one way or another. Yeah, and like uh, somebody said, the truth pressed to it. Uh, be it what we uh, shoot like a mushroom. Uh, we have Nappy who is uh, coming, uh, calling from New York. Uh, uh, Nappy, uh, we the line is open. Uh, Mr. Kennedy is here. We attempt to uh, address uh, your question. Nappy, you're on. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi, Mr. Nappy. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes. And they want to deny the past, which says that's where my problem is. I cannot understand how Anglophone, we can talk about Anglophone and deny the position of the SDS as the person or as the organization or as the party that represents the people of the Anglophone. I think that's the main party and the position of that main party. If it's at the parliament or at the or at the Grand Debat or in the public meeting is supposed to respect the, the value and the willing of the people of the Norway in the Southwest. Yes. First of all. And secondly, for the Cameroonian as a whole. But when people come, every from the Norway and the Southwest, they want to deny this part of the fight. They will look like family and background want to deny the fight of the UP. I yeah. think we are the country that is moving forward, not moving backward. I think separation or division is moving backward. Proceduralism is moving forward because the thing that we missed in the past is concern. It was the proceduralism. The proceduralism that my brother Okay. And there's no American who is going to come to Cameroon and tell me how what we like and what we are going to do for ourselves. No matter how we are fighting among ourselves, Cameroon is Cameroon for Cameroonians. There's no way we are going to accept any person that is going to come from outside and tell what to do. 
We are not here to confuse with male colonialism. Neither with the colonialism mentality. The best colonialism mentality is to listen to Washington, listen to Paris, listen to whatever you call it, the uh, uh, ONU, UN, and so on. So I will not try to put my composition to you and say everything that you should say tonight is the right. It's true. But scripture is the constellation that is supports and we cannot change it again. The variable is the scripture. Let's move on and change the scripture and be a truthful canonial for ourselves. We have to conserve our, our francophone and our, 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 and our anglophone as the heritage of our colonialism life. We should not erase it. It's a part of us. It's a part of our diversity. That's why the SPS went to the election last time with the slogan of force of uh, uh, the strength of diversity, la force de la diversité. Thank you very much, and um, I'm with you guys. I support you with all the, the things that you are doing with the media deal at Singapore. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Nappi. Thank you for that rich contribution. I think uh, uh, Mr. Kenneth will react to your uh, rich contribution. Uh, Mr. Kenneth? Yeah. Uh, Nappi, believe it or not, you see, when you look at the, econ the Human Development Index, United Nations figures and statistics, trust me, you will agree with me that uh, the British colonized countries are far advanced than just about any country that was colonized by France. You mentioned neocolonialism. You know very well already that the British pretty much abandoned you know, most of these countries. But the French engaged in neocolonialism. And what did the French do? Um, look, what most people don't know is that what the, the sovereign bondage the economic bondage that the French are administering on their African former colonies is the same thing that Germany did to France in World War II. Germany made 20 French francs to be equitable to one Reich mark. Yes, that is what uh, Adolf Hitler did. Mm -hmm. And so, that, 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 that is what they did. They devalued the French currency completely and extracted resources, a lot of resources, from France during that period of the World War. So, of course, the French, I mean, couldn't stand this. They hated this to the last man standing. And uh, uh, anyway, the situation over there with Germany and France, the, the, the French corrected it. They corrected it over there. But come now to Africa... Shortly after the colonial period, the French did the same thing that the Germans did to them, to African countries. So that's why there's no development uh, 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 in La Republique du Cameroon and today in West Cameroon, okay, or the South, the occupied territories of Southern Cameroon. So my question and what I have to all my brothers and sisters of La Republique, right, is that why on earth? Can you guys and ladies not see the struggle for the liberation of the occupied territories of southern Cameroons as the real liberation of German Cameroon? Because a lot of us have asked ourselves, we, what is France? We were using a different currency. Mm -hmm. eh? We were using a different currency. Then you take our money to put in a bank in uh, 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 Bayak or Bayak Nationale and then Bayak Central, then you turn around and put, I don't know how many percent deposit in the French treasury, then the French treasury turns around and this is done amongst all. Why can, why can you people not see that the liberation of Cameroon, Cameroon with a K, is not, is, 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 is beyond these two shrimp, Cameroon with a C, shrimps, people of shrimps, people who have no backbone, why can you people not see that? One Cameroon means what? So eh? na, na, in Switzerland, you. they speak French, they speak Italian and German in Switzerland. In Liechtenstein, they speak Romansh. You have South Korea, I have North Korea. South Korea is far developed than North Korea. 
These are the same people, the same language, but different systems. So why can you not accept that the Southern Cameroons has a different system and adopt it? In fact, I would want to see all of Cameroon maybe speak English someday. Is that not the language that most of the world is speaking? So, mi Mr. Nappy, are you still on? Yeah. yeah. So okay, uh, uh, I think uh, you've had uh, Kenneth's uh, approach to uh, your uh, rich contribution. Uh, this is a very uh, 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 kind of collaborative platform. Uh, we appreciate what you contributed, but his, we, we're asking uh, you now, after 50 years of independence and with the uh, marginalization experienced uh, by the uh, Anglo Anglophone Cameroonians, despite the fact that they're fighting to stand, uh, uh, like to be recognized, to be acknowledged at, uh, as equal citizens, though in diverse ranks, because in, the, in that section too, we have CPDM uh, strongholds that support Bia's government who are from the English section, and they are weakening that struggle. So according to your uh, uh, reaction, would you uh, want Cameroon to remain uh, a, f a, f a federated, uh, two-state federated Cameroonian, uh, Cameroon, or would you want Cameroon to be united, or would you go for a secession? Yes. Okay, what else? The federalism, the state of federalism that we have in 1961 might be modified by the state of 2010. So how far are you yeah. sure that how far are you sure that the terms of the return to 1961 will be respected after more than th 37 years of being together with no respect given to the uh, English section of Cameroon? How far are you sure that? Uh, the, the, the present Cameroon would respect uh, the fact that two uh, uh, independent uh, bodies came together. Uh, uh, Modest and uh, Kenneth. Yes, sir. Both of you are on stage, but I'm telling you right now yes. that it's not the people who oppress us. It's not their problem. It's our problem if you are not able to impose to other people, whatever we want Cameroon to be. I don't want Cameroon to be what we are saying. Every, I don't want Cameroon to be what, what we think. I want Cameroon to, to be what me, I can ask a, a Cameroonian. No one cannot come and talk on my behalf in, in, in the fight on my behalf in Cameroon. No matter who you are, mm -hmm. I want Cameroonian, I will say Cameroonian, I will defend Cameroon. And then if everybody think like that, we, we believe that the decision will be our it will be our solution. If we believe that the solution cannot be our solution, we will, we, we will fight and then we will get to the solution. And that's exactly why we are not in the war. Because we don't believe of the same thing. So the people who try not to respect what we have set down together in the fight are those who are wrong. Yes. and then have one voice, we will stay united, and then we will be in a federation. That's my voice. Thank you so much for your contribution, uh, Mr. Nappi. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we have people who are also uh, trying to come up. I want to first of all welcome uh, James Tato, who is watching. Uh, uh, he says he doesn't trust uh, La Republique, mm -hmm. that they will never respect any agreement. That's James Tato, who is a purple. Before you finish, yes. I want to I want to put the same thing. I don't trust La Republic. I don't trust any government that will put a, a, in Cameroon by the French people. I don't trust them. Okay. I'm telling you, I don't trust them, and then I will never follow them. I never fought Aito. I never fought Phobia. I won't fall whoever will come to Cameroon by French by French means. Thank you for your contribution, uh, Nappy. I understand. My grandma, my grandma is from Baligam yes. in the northwest, and my grandfather, my grandfather, are from Balasinghe on the on, in, in Buddha in the, in the French party. Who do you want me to choose between 
the tomb that I have on one side and the tomb that I have on another side. They all my family. And this has been for I'm the I'm the I'm the head of the Mbayapi family who come from my grand grandfather. I'm the fourth generation that came from your area, but from the Kumba and Bari Kumba, whatever it is. And they moved to Bamasinge, which is in the no, northwest now. My grandmother from another side moved from the, the Francophone side to the northwest side and, and created a family over there maybe 400 years ago. So these are the things that are very difficult for people who, who know how the history of their people to make a decision. I want to remain myself, not a Frenchman, not an Englishman. I want to remain Cameroonian. You can call Ambazonian for the whole land. I will, I will, I will buy it. Um, my brother, Nappy. Thank you. Uh, listen to Kenneth's reaction. I. It, all of us have families that are brought from Cameroon Occidental and Cameroon Oriental. Um, please don't confound statehood with ethnicity. If we try to go very much back in time, I mean, or even now, I remember when uh, uh, Mr. George Achu was governor in the eastern province. Eh? The government yeah. that doesn't keep in touch with their people one, uh, uh, did a ceremony one time, and when they went out there, eh, all the people in that village were not there. They had gone to Central Africa Republic. Because there was a very important event of that ethnicity with their brothers and sisters on the other side. No, it's not a matter of ethnicity. It's a matter of family. I'm talking about my family. I'm not talking about my ethnicity. It's not a matter of ethnicity. Family is a distrust form. Okay, uh, thank you, Nati. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, I think we'll be taking you up again if uh, some other people uh, leave the line. We have a very easy line. We have uh, people trying to talk from left and right. Nati, thank you for your contribution. We have no a John Gira who says the new process of the experiment has failed. Let us uh, move on. You got it. We have to leave the line. But it only says that it's a big, uh, it's a strange problem. Uh, closing down. It also says that it's cold. It's like uh, we have starting it, starting it, uh, my brother was working uh, all the way from uh, Greenberg, Netherlands. Yeah, this uh, mentor, Pastor James, is working Dominica, welcome, and five pages. You guys, you're welcome to come to this, uh, to this platform, to that uh, phone line for a uh, time. Uh, uh, Mr. Kenneth, uh, before we'll be observing, uh, in the next two weeks, having a commentary break, so we did not talk to you, Sancho, who uh, was a kind of held back. Uh, we also want to, uh, also want to shout out to Tabe Atu, uh, one of my best friends who is working. I like your comments, you can do it. Uh, Mr. Kenneth, we have to act on this as well as a contribution. This is uh, what most companies are talking about. Family that has always been preached. Uh, there's a lot of intermarriages uh, because when we hear today of the the, 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 the grass field is northwest west, and when we hear of uh, the the sours, we the, that is we're talking of uh, Litora and uh, south and some part of southwest. So it is kind of uh, breaking a, a whole lot of. Uh, family lineage. There is nothing, they, I don't know why people are bothered by that. Pobia has relatives in Equatorial Guinea. Uh -huh. And the other people, they, if you go to the north, yeah. uh, what's his name? Ad um, Amadou Ali's father's uh, um, grave is in Nigeria. Yeah. So what are these people talking about? The, the people of, uh, what is it? Um, if dwellers. Mm -hmm. The dwellers, the Kosses or Bakose, uh, Kundus or Bakundus, these are people who came from Congo. There's no problem. Mm -hmm. The um, in Bamenda, in the Bamenda area, mm -hmm. you have uh, uh, people who came from the western province who are who are just about a few years ago. The Bufola or Bafut, mm -hmm. they came from Tibati. 
Okay. You have the Manu, who the Ifik and the Ekois, who are subgroup. The way, I'm sorry, the what do you call them? Bayan, mm -hmm. who are subgroup of the Ifik, and then the Ejagans, who are subgroups of the Ekoi. They came from uh, uh, present day Nigeria and they settled at Osindenge, a place called Osindenge in Manu Division. So you go all over Cameroon, people came from all over. I sure. met a lady working at Chevy Chase Bank who told me that she's Congolese, but her grandfather uh, came down from Yokaduma. So See. let us not confuse statehood with uh, 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 family, with family ties and, <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and, and, and ethnicity. Okay. I, have, I have great grandparents who came from uh, the Western province, but sure. I'm a Southern Cameroonian. Let's, in fact, as a matter of fact, look, in the Southern Cameroon's parliament, you had at least three first generation East Cameroonians sure. in that parliament. So let us not mix things. The statehood of the Southern Cameroons has to be restored. Sure. And then these people were committing genocide. Eh? They, again, this genocide by Paul Bia eh? and He's, uh, uh, what is it, Betty, uh, what is his name? Be Betty, Betty Asomo, uh, Asomo uh, uh, the Minister of Injustice, Laura Esso, this uh, idiot, or whatever it is, the guy from the Northwest Province who passes for Minister of Territorial. All these people who face the uh, criminal court at, at The Hague. Before we observe a commercial break, uh, I will say a special hi to Frank Jeffy, Frank Lopro, the younger brother of Jeffy Pius, who is presently in California. Uh, equally, I see a man for justice. Uh, 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 James Tato says there's a, a, a glitch in the system. Uh, thanks, James. Uh, uh, we'll be observing a commercial break, and surely uh, the technical uh, team will uh, see into that. Thank you. Ensemble, levons-nous pour célébrer la fin de l'année 2019 avec la communauté Onkem des états unis Samedi 28 décembre 2019, de 19h à 4h du matin, au Hampton Conference Center, adresse 207 W Hampton Place, Capital Heights, Maryland. Ticket disponible, 70 dollars, 100 dollars. 
et 150 dollars. Contact 240 665 87 59 202 288 71 75 240 863 53 42 202 766 28 93 202 718 49 49 Sponsor officiel Fortuna Téléphone Partenaire Média Média de Africa End of Your Paris Un événement à ne pas manquer Bonne année 2020 à tous. Ensemble, levons nous pour célébrer la fin d'année 2019 avec la communauté Hong Kong des États-Unis, samedi. Uh, No, it's okay. It's okay. Speak. Who can hear? Do you, who can hear? Yeah. You speak here. Understand me. I so I am uh, completely embarrassed because uh, I brought some words to say. Uh, I would like to do this. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Can you? You want to make a statement? Please. I like, uh, 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 two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes, Mr. President. I know you are a president, but here we are all equal. <laughs> If you don't mind, I hope you don't mind. This is civil society organization for a moment to our bosses. Bon. Please. Bon. <coughs> Monsieur le Président, Madame, do you understand me? Yes. Madame, uh, la secrétaire générale de l'organisation. Uh, if you can speak in the mic, please. No, no speak here. Oh. Oui, uh... Yeah? No, it's okay. It's okay. Speak who can hear. Do you, who can hear, do yeah. You speak here. Understand me? I saw I am uh, completely embarrassed because uh, I brought some words to say uh, I would like to do this. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Can you... You want to... Make a statement, please. Uh, uh, two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes, Mr. President. I know you are a president, but here we are all equal. <laughs> If you don't mind, I hope you don't mind. This is civil society organization for a moment to our bosses. Stay connected. Uh, we are back from the commercial break. I want to give special thanks to uh, James Tato who uh, notified us of the uh, the glitch with the system. I uh, hope our technical uh, board has uh, taken care of that. Thanks once more, James. Um, we are coming back on board with a very strong uh, one of the strong panelists that we've always had here. It's been a while that uh, Dr. Ngu Santos uh, has not graced this uh, uh, platform. Dr. Ngu Santos, welcome to the platform once more. Thank you, Mr. Bat Modest. I yeah. am back here again. Uh, hello, viewers. Uh, after a very long time, uh, so busy with work, uh, been created some, I've created some time again uh, to be here and to talk to my people. So it's been a pleasure being here today. And hello, Mr. Kenneth. Uh, it's been a while, and I'm glad again to see you and hear from you guys. Thanks, uh, Dr. Uh, You are coming in when there is, we were uh, in this talk, uh, the heated debate of uh, the uh, level of arrogance demonstrated by the uh, uh, Cameroonian military and equally the managerial team where uh, from the wet go they said there wasn't an Anglophone problem and gradually and sluggishly uh, accepted it by creating reforms that acknowledged that there was a marginalization factor. And till today, they have uh, been uh, reluctant to really submit to international pressure. And of recent, America has taken the helm of the UN uh, security. And we watched uh, Kelly uh, saying, this time is not the moment of talking. It's a moment of doing and not only talking. Because uh, even the st special status attributed to uh, English Cameroon during the national, just ended national dialogue, And nothing, we have not known the content for more than two months now. 
and the parliamentary session unfortunately ended and nothing was m mentioned uh, of the st special status theory. America raised uh, that unbearable uh, pressure that has uh, prompted to, uh, uh, the calling of the extraordinary uh, uh, plenary session that is uh, due to hold for the next two weeks now. So I think you will come, you, you, you'll be entering there with a powerful and fresh uh, energy on this particular point. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Modest. You know, um, uh, politically, at this juncture, uh, I've seen um, a lot of uh, heated arguments, a lot of debate. I've heard a lot of debate and he heated arguments as well as uh, I've been following up the politics and being an actor in the politics uh, from uh, uh, the Southern Cameroonian and Amazonian side. And uh, I've always been very instrumental in the politics. But uh, given the fact that uh, there is a humanitarian disaster or catastrophe in Cameroon, whereby uh, in the English Cameroonian side, the military has recklessly been killing people, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the resistance movements have adopted the high military stand of defending themselves. Uh, there have been uh, uh, mass human casualties. Uh, there have been exodus, uh, both internally and externally, that has reached, led to a, a refugee uh, uh, a crisis mm -hmm. within the border countries of Nigeria and Ghana. And why not Mexico next door? whereby there are a lot of refugees here struggling to get into this country, the United States of America. And then uh, talk, talk less about uh, I, myself, and yourself here uh, being, being held hostage uh, abroad, of not uh, being able to go back home. And even those who are not involved in politics stand the risk of being abducted, mm -hmm. of being abducted uh, if they happen to go home, as uh, you have heard from the cries on social media that uh, uh, people have been abducted for ransom. Uh, and then uh, there's also uh, a lot of people who have been amputated, wounded warriors and soldiers uh, in the hospital, uh, both on the Republic side and on the defendant side, mm -hmm. uh, or the defending side. So I see uh, a humanitarian catastrophe uh, taking place in that country that uh, it really calls for uh, some level-headed and, and uh, individuals uh, worldwide to intervene and try to see how they can uh, restore peace and order. And by restoring that peace and order, or we'll talk less about post-war reconstruction, of which the war is not yet over. It means uh, uh, we really, really, really need some uh, uh, help, help, from both uh, level-headed individuals from the Cameroonian or the Amazonian or Anglophone Cameroon side and the international community side, so as to try and work out things for the better men of mankind and humanity. You see, um, I will be talking mostly of mankind and humanity because from a health and humanitarian professional base, I think I have a lot of work to do in this revolution, uh, not only about the politics. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Doctor. Uh, before we proceed, uh, we have B. Lydia who is asking for the phone number. Uh, there's also a Skype link that is shared uh, uh, beneath. Uh, B. Lydia, if you've not had it, I think our technical board will uh, pass that on that once and uh, more so you can uh, connect it through that number. Uh, you will see a Skype number and equally a number that you can call and participate in the uh, platform talk. Uh, uh, can I just come in, uh, uh, Dr. Ngu Santos just came in powerfully. Uh, with the uh, humanitarian factor. Uh, the war is still going on. Uh, uh, here, uh, Cameroon uh, government was lobbying for uh, support from the international body for post uh, reconstruction. Uh, what is your take on that, uh, Kenneth? I, when the uh, government of La Republic organized the Francophonie Summit, yeah. uh, France sent some aid to Cameroon, mm -hmm. and what turned out with that aid in order to prepare for the Francophonie conference, I would say was a disgrace because the French themselves mm -hmm. came all the way into Yaoundé to tar roads. Yeah. And this happened because they were afraid that the money that would be given to them is going to be embezzled. Um... We have what we used to call Stad Amadou Aijo in the federal, the former federal capital city of Yaoundé. Mm -hmm. They now call it Stad Omispor. 
in Pandena. Mm -hmm. uh, at Olembe, in the outskirts of Yaoundé, another football stadium is being built, mm -hmm. which um, has been nicknamed, or they're going to call it Stad Bia or Stad Paul Bia, something like that. Yeah. So far, they are saying, I think the estimate is that they're going to spend 200 and it's, it's either 287 million or 187, one of those type of figures, I can't remember. But that may just will be the most expensive stadium mm -hmm. ever con uh, constructed on African soil. So when a toothless bulldog prime minister sits with uh, foreign diplomats mm -hmm. and is asking for reconstruction or what have you in um, in the territories of Cameroon or the, the occupied territories of mm -hmm. southern Cameroon. Yeah. Honestly, um, I, I don't believe these people. There's nothing <laughs> to trust from what, whatever We have a James say. Tato who is saying Ambazonia is supposed to give so, a special status to La Republic because 75% of uh, the wealth is coming from uh, West Cameroon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, James Tato, that is a very a strong one. That, that, that yeah. is true. I mean, that is true. The oil... Oil is being uh, oil has been tapped from Isangele, mm -hmm. the real the Ray oil basin, since 1977. Yeah, uh -huh. and then they are paying taxes not in Victoria or Limbe. They are paying taxes to the city of Douala. You know the 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 Sonara oil refinery. It's there. It it doesn't function anymore at all. Um, you see this first first of all right. They have to be two separate states. Yeah. So I don't know why La Republic du Cameroon is trying to put the cat before the horse. First of all, they had uh, mentioned that there is a disarmament, something that uh, this former governor is uh, is part of that committee, mm -hmm. and then uh, <coughs> now they are talking about uh, look, Southern Cameroon would have its own statehood. Let the people, uh, uh, people like Dion Gute mm -hmm. and all these other people, they will come back home. When they come back home, that is when we can now function as a people. Not these token representatives we have today over there in La Republic du Cameroon. Mm -hmm. We 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 are of we, we participate in elective politics. Not nominative policy. What are you nominating? Yeah, that's pure nonsense. That is why uh, when you see, uh, it's like uh, when from you assessing uh, the reproach, uh, the approach of the government to resolving this problem. I see, like Cameroon has always uh, given the wrong, uh, attempted the wrong solutions in the heat of the crisis. I didn't see the impact of the bi national bilingualism bureau or what that, that was headed by uh, Musonge. I didn't see its own impact. It 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 it, is, it it was it is dead at arrival because I'm not seeing any impact the national bilingualism has uh, put in this struggle. Uh, do you uh, see uh, with me, or do you have a contrary opinion, or you see something that the bilingualism uh, uh, section or the faction that was created has uh, contributed to resolve this crisis? Um, I think when you talk about when you take the problem of uh, uh, the ongoing crisis and relate it to bilingualism. I uh, think uh, it's far-fetched because um, you will not be uh, examining the root causes of the issue. Uh, the root causes of this issue, of this crisis, is well known. Um, it began all with lawyers and teachers, you mm -hmm. know, then generated into a, a conflict of ideas and opinions and um, disagreements over issues of uh, 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 state, statehood, mm -hmm. over issues of statehood, and... Um, uh, to resolve any matter, that will be the first item to put on the table, which is the statehood. Yes. Because you know um, uh, the history speaks for itself, mm -hmm. that um, uh, two, two entities had their own independence on separate days. Separate days. And then separate came years. To separate days and separate years, mm -hmm. and then came to live in fellowship, uh, in harmony, uh, as a... Uh, people who have to exist with their own prime ministers and their own governments, then they went into an agreement of living like brothers and sisters uh, without a treaty of union, mm -hmm. without a treaty of union duly signed. 
And I think that um, uh, the, the arguments are all there. And anybody who stands to say that, uh, for example, I've had arguments a few days ago mm -hmm. uh, with some francophones who were telling me um, uh, that how can a state spring out from nowhere? Mm -hmm. I asked the, that I, I scold that lady by telling her that if she knows what was called West Cameroon and East Cameroon, mm -hmm. then you will not tell me about a state springing out from nowhere. nowhere. Then I discovered that the problem that she had was the acronym or the appellation of the name Ambazonia. Mm -hmm. And that is what doesn't sit comfortable with her or comfortably, comfortably with her. Mm -hmm. I told her that forget about the name. You can be uh, uh, called West Cameroon, you can be called Southern Cameroon, and today you decide to say you want to change your name you to be Ambazonia. It doesn't mean that that territorial uh, aspect becomes missing, right? So many countries have changed their Good. name. Some countries have changed their name. You but know, Coast yeah, that but, is today but Ghana what, or something. What we have to be looking at this moment <coughs> from a humanitarian uh, perspective, mm -hmm. as I've always come back to say, is uh, uh, do we wait uh, after uh, uh, or the international, must the international, international community sit and watch mm -hmm. about 8 million people are eclipsed from the planet Earth? before, before they come to intervene. And that is where my problem lies. And also, when it comes to the government of La Republic du Cameroon, I always like to be very open and transparent by uh, uh, telling you people that m must they continue with impunity to eradicate our people? No. Must, is there an appropriate time whereby people can come together and talk about to ending this human catastrophe, this inhuman catastrophe that is ongoing. Yes, uh, who are those who are capable of bringing this under uh, some control? Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about it and you look at what the current uh, political uh, 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 map of what is ongoing, uh, like the, the, so the, the much talk uh, Swiss talks, the much talk Swiss talked about Swiss talks, mm -hmm. and when you examine uh, the Swiss talks, then you see the hands behind the Swiss talks, and it becomes more of a commercial interested talks than a conflict resolution talks. Because when you look at the fact that there is a, a company behind, a, an international company uh, that is called uh, 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 what Bell HG Caribou. and Berenqua yeah. and what do you call Caribou, that? They say they are interested about the resources that are on the t in the territory, and that is why they are putting their head into this thing, and that already leaves us again in in doubt because how can we be leaving slavery and going into slavery? Into slavery. How can we be leaving exploitation and moving into further exploitation? So I I believe that we still can come out with another platform whereby. There can be negotiation, genuine negotiation, because no matter any war that has been fought for 50 years, 100 years, talks have to be going on Why the war is ongoing. So we have to find a middle ground whereby there can be a solution. Yes. And it takes, it takes level-headed individuals or parties that have, uh, are not so embedded in the war to sit back and watch and say, what can I do to recommend something that can be put on that table. Uh, but I've also consulted with both the Ambazonian and La Republic side. I've discovered that there's a gross mistrust from how things have been going on. So now what is the problem? Both sides are scared or skeptical of one another, given that they have repeatedly uh, disappointed yeah. the other. Mm -hmm. So in this case, they are requesting for international mediators international observers and mediators because no matter if we fight the war for 50 years, 100 years, all must end on the negotiation table. Uh, come to talk about that, uh, Mr. Kenneth. Yeah. Uh, don't you see uh, Bia is, uh, President Bia is just playing his own position by defending the fact that uh, Southern Cameroon is the breadbasket of Cameroon. And now that we uh, Southern Cameroonians are standing to succeed from the uh, Union, he is simply just playing card and uh, hard and saving the francophone Cameroonians uh, the best that he can do to make sure that he maintain the union because when that separation takes place, uh, Cameroon will be a, a desert. Well, um, Paul Bia is just a continuation of Amadou Abidjan. And so the French were looking for somebody who was more, more malleable than. Yeah. They found Amadou Aijo and 
then uh, uh, 4B is a continuation of, of that whole process. Okay, uh, we we are signaled from the uh, technical <coughs> that, board that somebody's online. Hello. Please, can you say your name and uh, your uh, okay. coming? Yes. Uh, I'm Brother Children of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm the one using the <laughs> Facebook account of Tamambang the Elysia. Oh, okay. So, what's your contribution yeah. for tonight's talk? Yes, uh, actually, I have so much to say. Uh, the first thing would be to first talk about, sorry that I just came in now, about the humanitarian crisis in the southern mm -hmm. Uh we, We've requested that uh, all those who are doing humanitarian assistance in southern Cameroon should not pass through La Republic of Cameroon because this is a conflict of two states. Let's put the point so clear as it is supposed to be. We are no longer going to talk about negotiating or accepting the works of La Republic in the state of Southern Cameroon. That one has finished. We are making it very clear. We contacted the office of the United Nations Organization of uh, the Center of Humanitarian Assistance in Boya, and we spoke to them clearly that they should know that henceforth they must be using the things of Southern Cameroon. It is not a joking matter. We cannot accept such such insult from Bia and his government on our people. This is a, this is very finite. It, there is no way we are talking. We are angry and we are very angry. We are making it very clear everywhere. In the US here, we are making it very clear. We are not taking anything again from La Republic. They have insulted our people. They are causing genocide on our people and they cannot come again to pretend that they want to build. They are the ones who succeeded from the union in 1972. We are taking it. The root cause of that issue is 1970. It's not the teacher's strike of 2016. That was just a passive issue. The root cause is the fraud of La Republic on the federation that was installed in the two countries from 1961. Because in 1961, after the two countries joined, we had the Southern Cameroon with its own name and La Republic with her own name. When they joined, Southern Cameroon became West Cameroon as from 1961 to 1972. And Largui was called in that union East Cameroon. So anyone who is using that name for West Cameroon is talking about federation. We are no longer at that level. We've made it very clear. I say I'm brother Charles of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are, when we talk about restoration, we mean restoration to the, the state of the independence, total independence of Southern Cameroon. And when we are not talking restoration to West Cameroon, we are making our point very clear. And all of these people, like Dr. Nissan, who are struggling to make all those petty games with Dr. Constantine Chuenko, we have told them, just like in the last meeting, after the fall of Ralukri, we shall do general hanging. We shall hang all those people who are supporting this genocide on our people. We spoke last time in the United States. We had a meeting at the United States Institute of Peace. We spoke there. I spoke that we shall do hanging. We shall arrest all of these people. This is not something to be spoiled, to be taken as if it's a light issue. You cannot kill someone on the person's land and you use a gun and you go behind and you see that person is a terrorist. It does not work. You don't negotiate with thieves. On this earth, there is there is just a moral issue coming from your mother, I'm a preacher. Tells you that if you steal, you have to debate yourself and you need to bet. We don't negotiate with thieves. And when we finish with a non violence issue, there's a ladder when we shall end. At that level, and that we does not succumb. We shall do a full fresh war. We shall fight that war. You cannot be burning our people, killing them on their land, and you expect us to come and be begging. I am giving my name, Joe Ransom. I'm not hiding. Thank you so much. We struggle to talk to President Kobia, spoke to his uh, uh, people. Well, I even asked Dr. Nissan to give me the number of, of uh, John Gute. We shall hang them. It's not a mockery. We shall hang them. When they go about sending people for humanitarian, like uh, uh, St. Jomo, who are talking for federation, they write at the United States centers because they go there. We shall do hanging. All these Batam Bamleke people who are in that land, do you know what We shall do hanging. Mark my voice. I'm in the U.S. It's not a simple matter. You cannot kill the people and you go about trying to force things. Many businesses uh, to talk about uh, Swiss stocks for federation. It's Swiss stocks for total independence. Put it total independence. You see, all of us will come. But Sabogad will come. Everybody will come. 
Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your contribution. Yeah, thank you, thank you for your contribution. Uh, and uh, I want to say, uh, if you if you are available, I would love to apply uh, to invite you on my platform in the nearest future. Uh, you have the contact. He has my number. Doctor Nisa to have my number. When you see all that are trying and making all this nonsense, we shall do handling. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you. I will want. I will, I will love you to be on the platform since you are here in the United States. I will love you to call uh, Media Two. You, I will love you to call Media Two and get contact to be on the platform. It's like you have a lot to contribute, which we we, we yes we yes we very much welcome. We, we welcome that. Thank you. I think uh, Doctor Doctor Santos, you can uh, yeah, the, react um, to that. Um, in a, in as much as um, I respect uh, Brother Cho Ransom. Uh, for his uh, uh, opinion, because I do, I do not blame uh, uh, people who have become so fanatical as a consequence of the pressure and the genocide and exhaustive about this uh, ongoing crisis. Because believe me, from a psychological uh, point of view and being a psychologist, I now understand that our entire nation of Southern Cameroons, mm -hmm. uh, all the citizens living both in the territory and out of the territory are undergoing or they are victims of post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, the criterion for qualifying only warrant a mere witnessing or observing a trajectory. Mm -hmm. For example, you must have seen the graphic images of people being slaughtered alive, people being executed in an abattoir or a butchery uh, marketplace, mm -hmm. uh, you get killed like animals. And we have we have known bad days in this revolution. We've seen a lot of blood. We've seen a lot of killings. The killings, I want to say, are not only killings perpetrated by the forces of, of, of disorder leaders or the forces of La Republic. The killings, some killings also have been perpetrated by thieves who have invaded the revolution, right? Mm -hmm. Thieves who have decided to come and pretending to be uh, called Amber Boys, right? Mm -hmm. Kidnapping people for ransom, uh, keeping people so long out of the territory without going back and without any amnesty. Uh, people being scared for their lives and um, uh, the, the, the people being buried alive. People being buried alive. All those things uh, for the past three years, getting to four years, have left people with uh, depression, depression, trauma, burnout, frustration, anger, and has transformed some to become psychopaths. Psychopaths in the sense that uh, when people are on mere onlookers of tragic things and inhuman acts, they must, it's some sort of play in their psyche to also be transformed tomorrow to become such evil doers. Yeah. So when you listen to people who talk in this revolution at the moment, you listen to them, uh, uh, you have to be, first of all, conscious of the fact that you have a lot going on in their mindset and in their brain neurotransmitters. Some are sick and they need a lot of counseling, which is therapy and medication management. And this is why it's always important for some of us to stand aloof and examine and re-examine or reconsider some of our stands. For example, I've been caught between really being an activist and really being a humanitarian. Somehow, people may not want or people may not like some of my stance at mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. because I'm wearing too many hats. Wearing the hat of a politician and wearing the hat of a doctor who gets up every morning and treat and do problem solving. Mm -hmm. And the kind of problem that I solve, imagine I'm just coming from the shelter, a homeless shelter in D.C., which has 500 occupants of diverse mental disorders, right? Mm -hmm. From morning to night, I have three or four cases to consult. One one patient, I have to spend three hours to do a comprehensive evaluation, treatment planning, and also di uh, distribute tasks to the psychiatrist and also to the nurse practitioners and all those. This is the task that I am confronted with. And these people I'm seeing are not different from the casualties that are caught in the bushes, trapped in the bushes, trapped in the forest, trapped in this political ongoing uh, brouhaha, right? Mm -hmm. And when brother Cho, people like Cho Ransom, they air their frustration. I look at it, I step back, because if you, for example, you usually say that if you are taking your shower and you see a madman comes and pick your dresses and it's escaping 
and you get out of that shower and start chasing that man who is mad who is more mad mm -hmm. it is you mm -hmm. who is chasing the madman to recover your dresses that is naked that people will consider as mad because if they say hold the madman people will come back after you who is naked mm -hmm. to hold first so in this kind of a situation consider people being depressed consider them suffering from an, an, anxious for something which is like suffering uh, anxieties mm -hmm. consider them to be victims of post-traumatic stress disorder consider them to have picked up some psychopathic threats from the inhuman uh, butcheries and, uh, and, and and bad things that are happening there and when you want to respond to them just tell them that bro you do not expect me with all the intellectualism i got with all the treatment planning tools that I got with all the crisis management and resolution skills that I got to behave like that other man, right? Who is in the streets with cutlasses and cutting people in the name of independence, right? Mm -hmm. I will step back and say World War I ended on a table. World War II ended on a yeah. table. Will the Ambazonian crisis or will the Southern Cameroon crisis not also end on a yeah. table? Mm -hmm. Of course, the answer is it will eventually end on the table. table. Yeah. But the issue is given the distrust or the mistrust between these two entities that has spanned through the years, we will not want a charade, yeah. a charade to take place. We want people to come on the table, visit the root causes of the issues, right? Yeah. Where it all started, why was there that mistrust? What has gone on through the years? Because the simple definition of this problem is an economic problem. You have taken people's resources. You have used it all through the years. You have deprived them of it, right? They have not been having a fair share of the cake. And anytime they stand up and they want to ask what they want that is theirs, you give them a little bit of pieces of meat, and after you beat them and arrest them and detain, and bring cosmetic solutions to to, 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 to think that you have resolved the problem, you have not resolved the problem. So yeah. how can some of us who have been activists and who are still in activism sit and look how we can create that table to become possible? Yeah. To become possible. Because if you, don't, if you do not stand and do it, somebody else will do it for you. Mm -hmm. And when that person does it for you, do not complain. Non-action is action, right? If you boycott an election, what do you do? You are indirectly telling the other person that go and win by fraudulent means, right? Yeah. So it's better to be there and partake or disrupt, right? Sure. Than not because, because you don't make your voice heard if you don't do something. For example, look at the guys going to Switzerland. Look at the guys going to Switzerland and going through the HD and Barry Kobe, right? They are pushing their own points. And at the end of the day, if there's no alternative, what happens? Their alternative becomes the only available alternative. So talking with both parties and trying to see if we can facilitate that table meeting is of very prime importance. Thank you. Uh, before we uh, proceed, I will be saying hi to Rodrigo Wako, who is just said salute to us. Then we have Man for Justice who uh, reacted. Don Jinga, you are disappointed with uh, something. Uh, you, I think you should express your point so perhaps media too can attempt to resolve it so you shouldn't be disappointed you said you are disappointed so uh don jinga come up with your point so we can be able to see if we can redress it uh kenneth i think we'll be turning to you uh, to give an insight uh the, the status quo and uh, the, the measures that have been taken and what is still going on now. i know you have a very rich illustration to put out there in respect to this before we round up well um <coughs> this is what i can say as far as the status quo is concerned. Um, going back to 1961, Amadou Aijo violated the, 1940, the article, article 47 mm -hmm. of the 1961 Constitution, where it said that the form of the, of the, or the character of the state mm -hmm. will not be tampered with. Amadou Ahijo in 1972 tampered, violated Article 47. Yeah. Okay. Um, forward time to when his illustrious successor, whatever they call him, Paul Bia, 
uh, took over from him in 1982, Fulbia further compounded the violation and renamed the country in February of 1984, mm -hmm. renamed the country La République du Cameroon, thereby auto-excluding Southern Cameroons or La République du Cameroon itself yeah. from the union with uh, 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 Southern Cameroons. That is why von Fodi Godwin Dika uh, took him to court. And of course, since uh, von Fodi Godwin Dika was far more intelligent than Paul Bia, he had to follow him with guns. It's you like know, a Mickey, it's like a Mickey Pomocon has difficulties things. hearing you. He says your volume. Okay, mm -hmm. my volume is uh, an issue. Okay. Thank you, Mickey. So, thank you. So th th uh, that is what happened since 61. Now, let me say this, and this is where, whether it is Paul, whether it is Amadou Ahijo, or even if it was Andre Marindida, mm -hmm. or whether it's Amadou Ahijo, or you can even argue and say, even if it is Kamto, mm -hmm. or even you put any, or even an Anglophone, even a, a, a Southern Cameroonian, <coughs> there, the Southern Cameroonians need to restore their statehood. Let nobody be fooled. Let me come see what, tell you what, a little bit of what I'm saying. In 61, Amadou Ahijo was made uh, uh, president mm -hmm. of both the Cameroons, right? Yes. Okay. And Foncha vice president. In 1969, or 68, 69, somewhere in there, you had people from France like Abel Eyinga, who was submitting his candidature for the president of the country. Mm -hmm. And, of course, back then, being what it was, um, his candidature was not accepted. Yeah. Abel Eyinga. Abel Eyinga is Bulu. His candidature was not accepted by uh, uh, Paul Bia. Okay. I'm sorry. By Amadou Ahijo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, people were encouraging Pa Foncha to run mm -hmm. at that time. But he was vice president, and I guess he had seen the high handedness of Ahijo, and perhaps he was afraid. I don't know. Yeah. But he did not run. Before uh, 60, before 1970, one of Paul B, uh, Amadou Ahijo's prime ministers, Vincent de Paul Ahanda, had actually resigned because <coughs> of the high handedness of Amadou Ahijo, the president at the time. Okay. Prior to the 72 so called refer we or yes referendum, mm -hmm. Amadou Ahijo was to dissolve the union and form, or, or let's just say dissolve the, the federation, the paper federation, because it was never really put, in, never put into practice. Mm -hmm. They were still systematically annihilating the southern Cameroons. Okay. In 72, part of the agreement, unwritten as it were, mm -hmm. was that if the first of the country is a, a, a from <coughs> La Republic or French Cameroon, then the second is from the southern, uh, the English-speaking Cameroon. That is how when Ahijo had created problems in actually nominating a prime, how do you nominate a prime minister in southern Cameroon? Mm -hmm. Those are the type of uh, that's the type of nonsense that Amadou Ahijo engaged in and ended up nominating uh, 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 Pamuna as prime minister. At the time when, I, in fact, in my, I don't even know whether Pamuna was uh, a member of parliament at the time that he was being nominated mm -hmm. as prime minister over there at that time. Anyway, so by 72, part of the agreement mm -hmm. that Amadou Ahijo had was that they would abolish the position of prime minister of East Cameroon and of West Cameroon. Mm -hmm. That is why from uh, uh, after that 72, there was no position of prime minister at all because the first was now Ahijo and then Pamuna, who was prime minister in, East, in West Cameroon, now became president of the National Assembly. So you had Amadou Ahijo as president, the first in command, and then in 1972, the president of the National Assembly, Pamuna. And the 1972 constitution stated very clearly that in case the president is incapacitated or what have you, then it is the president of the National Assembly who takes over. That was how it was as of 72. <coughs> three years later, three years later, this man who was uh, uh, working at the presidency, I think he was secretary general over there, three years later, what the English and the French had agreed to 
Ahijo completely abandoned it and created the position of prime minister, bringing in uh, 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 Paul Bia uh, as prime minister. Again, uh, completely forgetting what or, or uh, uh, discarding what they had previously agreed the to. The post of the vice president. The post of the vice president. Uh, no, um, there was no the vice president. Speaker of the, speaker assembly, of the assembly, yeah. National yeah. Assembly yeah. because yeah. it is Rada Parfoncha who was the uh, vice president. Mm -hmm. Okay. In 1979, four years later, Ahijo changed the constitution of 72 to state that if anything happens to the president of the republic, it is the prime minister who will take over. Amadou <laughs> Ahijo was now bypassing the English-speaking uh, 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 representation. Uh, uh, representation of Pa St. Muna, Solomon yeah. Tandeng Muna, mm -hmm. who was pri uh, president of the National Assembly. In their grand plan, that was 79. Mm -hmm. Barely three years later, Amadou Ahijo, in his grand plan, sent Pa Muna for some God alone knows whatever, sent him away to England. This happened in October, October of 1982. Mm -hmm. Pa Muna, while in England, got wind of the fact that Ahijo was about to resign and began to understood, understand while he was in England that this is what Ahijo was trying to do. And he had to get a flight and rush back home. When he rushed back home, Amado Ahijo did not even know that uh, uh, Pamuna had come back. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that he was there. But he now resigned, uh, 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 I think whatever that was, on the 4th or so, or, oh, or the 3rd of November, mm -hmm. 1982. Mm -hmm. And after he resigned, on the 6th, it is uh, Pamuna who was there, S.T. Muna who was there, administering the oath to Paul Bia. The reason I'm going through all of this is to state <coughs> the deep distrust that we Southern Camunians have with these people of La Republic. These are not people that you can who, 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 who can maintain their word. So what are we doing with them? Yeah. Eh? So we are about to restore the independence of the occupied territories of Southern Camus a botched decolonization process. Finally, um, the United States was one of the countries that supported the independence of the Southern Cameroons at the United Nations uh, circa 1960, 1959. Mm -hmm. The United States voted in favor for the independence of the Southern Cameroons. Uh, we've been working very, very hard, extremely mm -hmm. hard, and now the United Nations, the United States, has the presidency of the uh, uh, Security yeah, Council at the United Nations. Yes. Um, uh, President Paul Bia has called for an extraordinary session of what passes for a bicameral assembly uh, over there in Guatemala, an assembly which, by the way, they, they burnt that assembly, mm -hmm. that uh, party, the flame, representing themselves of flames, they burnt it, burnt Palais de Congrès. I don't know, they want to burn the whole Cameroon. Maybe they should also burn A to D. You know? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, he has called for an extraordinary so session. Oh, session. What is he calling for an extraordinary session for? After the normal session. After the, the normal the session nation, went over. I have said it on this program before. It is not, it is not Paul Bia. Southern Cameroon existed before him and will exist after him. It is not Paul B. <coughs> who will determine what will happen to the Southern Camus. It is Southern Camunians themselves. Yes. The Southern Camus intelligentsia abroad and the Southern Camus inside Southern Camus. In fact, even with collaboration with those in, in, in the BIA government. Thanks so much for that contribution. Uh, you have uh, uh, one minute to round up. Uh, we are running out of time. Dr. Ngu Santos. Um, who has braved the odds to be here uh, Mr. Kenneth, I always appreciate your, your in-depth knowledge of the historical and political developments. And I say, you say it as it is. Congratulations for that. Sure. And when I've come here more is to, uh, not only to 
share my own opinions or weigh in from my own psychoanalytic angle mm -hmm. or troubleshoot or do crisis management and intervention but also to uh, get some knowledge from uh, Mr. Kenende yes. about some intricacies of what really happened within uh, that structure mm -hmm. but uh, in a nutshell um, I think uh, it takes all of us together to work out and come out with what will be acceptable mm -hmm. to our people because uh, uh, governance any government that does not take into consideration the interest of its people at heart then it's a failure sure and uh, I think uh, our people have spoken and they know the direction they want to go it is left for us and those on the opposing side as well as the international community to understand that this problem will never be solved by blood and iron, right? Yes. Otto von Bismarck said it that the greatest question of the day will not be resolved by speeches, but by blood and iron. Yes, but later on, he it, it proved it proved that it couldn't continue by blood and iron. iron. It should end on a table. World War One ended on a table. World War Two ended on a table. table. And the Amazonian question. Would be resolved on the table. All everything we are asking is for the international community to now step up, especially with the taking over of the United Nations Security the Council by the United, United States, States, who has always been uh, calling for peace, uh, dialogue uh, without precondition and stuff for four years. Why our people have been eclipsed from planet Earth? This is the time for them to come in and serve as mediators or international observers to any accord. And for that, we stand here as level-headed intellectuals from the diaspora to facilitate any good resolution that will bring good outcomes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Santos. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kenneth. Uh, uh, there's no, uh, you see with me that when I introduced uh, Mr. Kenneth as one of the finest uh, analysts of uh, political uh, standard uh, situation of Cameroon, uh, I didn't, uh, I meant it because most of the uh, for platform followers, we have uh, Don Jinga who says Kenneth is very knowledgeable and always speaks facts and he learns a lot from him. Uh, so many people have acknowledged that. Uh, as I want to call, personally invite uh, Mr. Cho who uh, is answering uh, under the uh, shadow of B. Lydia that if you have that time, connect with media to and be on our platform. Uh, I will welcome you for uh, any uh, kind of contribution you want to give here. We are uh, rounding up now. I want to thank those who have stayed connected from the first minute to the last minute. And we thank you for your uh, always being there. I uh, want to thank uh, our collaborators. We thank uh, uh, President, uh, we call him President, that is uh, uh, Marisha Tiamo. I thank Honore who has been contributing from his uh, on site, though out of uh, state. I thank our technical. Uh, a bot led by uh, Ju Kamful Lati, who has been doing a great job. Uh, I want to now thank those who have stayed connected and say, uh, take an appointment uh, when our flyers go out. It's been an interesting debate with two uh, uh, great uh, invitees who honored uh, my invitation, uh, and they have uh, put out a sufficient information that has entertained your time, and I think you will not regret it. Thank you so much. Take an appointment when uh, our flyers go out for the next uh, production. Thank you.